All right, welcome to episode number two from chapter 14. And in this episode, we're going to cover karyotypes. Specifically, we're going to go over what is a karyotype, how do we use those, and how will you answer questions on a test or a quiz that deals with karyotypes. All right, so what is a karyotype? Basically, what a karyotype is, is we've let a cell go through cell division, but we paused it at metaphase, all right? So you can use these different kind of chemicals and add them to a cell and it'll allow the cell to get to metaphase and then stop the procedure. So we let a cell go through mitosis, we stopped it at metaphase, and then we took that cell out and we broke it open and we spread the chromosomes out on kind of a piece of paper, so to speak, and then we took a picture of it, okay? Now the picture is called a metaphase spread because we stopped mitosis at metaphase and then we spread out the chromosomes. Now, the chromosomes are then put into an arrangement based upon size, the centromere location, and the banding pattern. Now, I want you to think of the bands as being like a barcode. So, let me draw a fake chromosome right here. So, there's your centromere, and then there's the, the bottom arm. So, this would be the P arm put a P up here. This would be the Q arm. And then right here, we'll just, we'll draw this in right there. That would be your centromere. Okay. So let's pick a different color here. We'll use blue. Now the chromosomes will stain in, in a pattern, which we call the bands. Okay. So think of like a barcode. Some of these bands are thin, some of them are thicker, some are thin, some are thicker. And that's going to allow us to know what chromosome this is and where do we put it on the picture, okay? So there's going to be on size, centromere location, right here, one, two, and three. That's how we're going to decide which chromosome is which. So for example, chromosome number one is bigger, chromosome number 22, they're smaller. So they're going to be arranged from size. Lower the number, the bigger they are, the larger the number, the smaller they are. Now, what can I use a karyotype for? for? Well, I can use it to diagnose a genetic condition that's based upon chromosome numbers or something's missing or something's been added to the chromosome. So, basically we'll say changes in the chromosome. Use my chromosome symbol. So, maybe part of a chromosome has been deleted. So, let's look back up here at the top. Maybe all of this is gone, all right? So you would be able to see that. And we're also going to be able to use a karyotype for sex determination because you're actually going to be able to see the X chromosome and the Y chromosome. Remember, these guys here, those are your sex chromosomes. All right, so let's get rid of that. Let's go on to the next one because i got some pictures to show you. All right, this over here is a metaphase spread. So as you can see, the chromosomes are real distinct and you can see that they're spread out so that you can cut those out. And you're going to tape them over here on the, on, the, uh, on the karyotype. So I do want you to notice, you see where it's pinched in right here? And you can also see it right in this area there and right here. That's the centromere location. Notice you have some thick bands, some light bands, some thick bands again. We're all going to use that to arrange our chromosomes. On your metaphase, or I'm sorry, on your karyotype, they're almost always arranged exactly like this. The first three chromosomes pretty much have a centromere in the middle, and these chromosomes are the three biggest. And you notice how the banding pattern on these homologous chromosomes? Now remember, with homologous chromosomes, they're the same. So remember, homologous chromosomes, and that equals the same. So for example, maybe we got this chromosome from daddy and we got this one from mommy, so this right here is the homologous pair of chromosomes number one, okay? Uh, the next group of chromosomes, the centromeres, is much more off-center, but they're still pretty big. You'll notice here with our next group of chromosomes, centromeres slightly off-center, and they still just uh, move down in size. Here's another group where the centromeres near the end. Now they're back in the middle, middle more, and then at the end. You notice that they're bigger, and they get down to smaller. 
And then these guys right here, those are your sex chromosomes. So as you can see here, this is the karyotype of a normal human male. It has 46 chromosomes, and it's an X and Y. That's a normal guy. Now, a couple other things I do want to remind you. Chromosomes 1 through 22, those are called autosomes. And then the 23rd pair, those are the sex chromosomes. Remember, autosomes get numbers, sex chromosomes get letters. You got that on the previous screencast from this series. All right, let's move along. All right, so how do I make that notation? So how do I answer a karyotype question? How do I read a karyotype question? Or how do I read a karyotype? That's what you're going to learn on this slide, OK? Really want you to pay attention to this spot right here. And make a little note that this is something that you want to study. Because you need to know how to make a karyotype notation to answer your questions, OK? First thing you're going to do is you're going to list the number of chromosomes. And we're going to come over here to this, uh, let's do this one right here. We'll do this down here at the bottom, OK? We're going to list the number of chromosomes. So you're looking for pairs. Uh-oh, there's one that's got three, and there's a pair. So this individual here has 47 chromosomes. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to list the sex chromosomes. And as you can see right here, this individual has two X chromosomes, so XX. So I immediately know that this is a female with an extra chromosome, OK? So now I've got to note the irregu irregularity. And I know that there's one because I got 47 chromosomes. So does it have an extra chromosome? In this case, it does. Right here, it has a plus 13. So I would put a plus 13. So this person over here would be 47XX plus 13. Now, if it was missing a chromosome, which would be this one up here. If I look over here, 2, 2, 2, looking for pairs, looking for pairs. Uh-oh, I only have one sex chromosome. This individual is going to be 45X, OK? Now, because this is a sex chromosome, I don't have to put a minus X with it. Because once I say 45X, so normally you put a 45XO, because that would tell you that there's no other sex chromosome, OK? I could put part, maybe I can find out that part of a chromosome is missing. So for example, I have a, uh, a person that would be 46XY, but there's a deletion on chromosome 9 at 11, at the locus 11 on the P arm. That's what all this means. So a deletion on chromosome 9 at the 11 P locus on the P arm of chromosome 9. So that would be on the upper half above it, OK? Now, remember, as I told you here, if there's a extra or missing sex chromosome, I do not put the plus or minus, OK? Let's look up here at this one, all right? This person is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, eight. there's 3 of something right here. There's an X and a Y. So this one would be 47 X Y. And that's a number 18 plus 18. So that's how you would notate that, OK? Um, extra or missing chromosomes typically cause some serious problems, OK? So especially in this one and especially in this one over here. Over here on 45XO, we're going to learn about this in the last screencast in this series. This one isn't as big a deal as possible. Because it's OK to only have one X, because all guys are just like that, OK? Well, we're going to end this screencast right here, but I want to make sure that you don't hesitate to look at this one more than once because this is an important concept in this chapter. So we'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs>